Hello and welcome to Learn Data. It's great to have you on this channel. I'm Nilesh and in this very first video in the Intuition series, we are going to talk about likelihood. And in this particular video, we'll look at binomial distribution and the Gaussian distribution, how it applies to likelihood. In part one, let's imagine a poultry farm where uh, the company has to collect all the eggs from the farm and then transport them to the market. And in doing so, they are packed in uh, packaging material that they already have, but there is a problem. And the problem is that by the time the eggs reach the customer, uh, some of them break. So if a particular egg is broken in a package, uh, we'll consider in this video that the packaging for that uh, uh, shipment was failed, had failed. And if all the eggs are intact, then we'll consider that as a success. And so what the company then tries to do is they design new packaging to kind of get around this problem of uh, bro broken eggs reaching the customers. So they want to keep all the eggs intact uh, all the way through until it gets into the hands of the customers. So. Uh, as you can see in this particular right hand side image, uh, if a package reaches the customer intact, then it's considered as a success and therefore uh, there's no egg, egg breaks in there. However, if the eggs break either one or more than one, then we'll consider that packaging as a fail. Now, because this is a yes or no problem, we can use binomial distribution that is shown here on the left hand side. In this particular equation, the n is the total number of uh, observations and x is the number of successes. So, and p is the probability. Um, now, in this particular scenario, we'll think of the values for p uh, as assumed values. So let's look at this data that we get for a shipment of eggs. And here we have the value of n is equal to 10. So we have information about 10 packages. And out of those 10, six packages were intact and four packages were damaged. So in those four packages, there were at least one egg that was broken. And we know from our prior experience that for new packaging, there's a 75% chance that the packaging stays intact and there are no broken eggs. However, with the older packaging, it was like a 50-50 chance that the package would remain intact or it won't. Now, based on this information, we can pose a question uh, such as this one which is what is the likelihood that the data that we have received on the previous slide is for old uh, versus new packaging. So what's the likelihood? And we can use the binomial distribution to try to answer this question. So here is the very first calculation for that. And if it uh, for old package, we know that the probability P is 0.5. So we plug in the numbers in the binomial distribution equation right here. And uh, we calculate that the value is 0.2. Similarly, we calculate the value for the new package uh, where the probability is 0.75. And we see that the calculated value here we have is 0.14. And thus, when we look at the likelihood ratio of, that is the success uh, of 0 0.5 to 0 0.75, we see that the value is 1.4. So 0.2 divided by 0.14. And what that tells us is that there is 1.4 times more probable that the data is for old packaging uh, as compared to the new packaging. So that's one uh, type of information that we can get using the likelihood. Now in this plot, uh, here on the left hand side, 
we have the likelihood function and on the right hand side is the same likelihood function scaled to one so i've scaled the y-axis to one and there are two points uh, the yellow orange and the green one so here the orange point is the probability of 0.5 for old packaging and the green point is for the new packaging which is probability of 7.75 and the reason to show this particular plot is that now when we look at the series of these plots here going from left to right we can see that the number n is increasing from 10 to 100 to 500 and x which, which is the number of successes that is in this case would be the number of intact packages out of n uh, is 6 60 and 300 uh, so they are uh, in the proportion is the same so if you look at the dotted line in each of those plots that is the maximum likelihood that is 0.6 in all of these three plots so the you know, uh, item that I'd like you to notice in these three plots is that uh, as we go from uh, left to right on the rightmost image although the likelihood values for each of these packaging old and new is very low it's close to zero but if we look at the likelihood ratio it's uh, close to 24 million and if you look at the very first plot the likelihood ratio for both uh, for the old and new packaging is 1.4 and their uh, individual likelihood ratios or uh, individual likelihood values they are also much higher they are uh, above 0.5 so uh, when we are looking when we kind of calculate the likelihood ratios we want to be aware that it can change with uh, the number n so when we are saying that the likelihood ratio is very high and therefore this has to be there uh, that may or that may depend on the number of samples that uh, uh, one is looking at so uh, to make conclusions from likelihood analysis in such as this one you probably want to make sure you have enough data points to kind of uh, give a, a realistic value for how much more or the how much is the likelihood ratio so the effect size in part two now let's look at likelihood function using a Gaussian normal distribution and here are uh, the here are two equations the equation on the top and the bottom this is the same except uh, what's on the left hand side of those equal to sign in the top equation the p is the probability density uh, and on the uh, lower equation l is for likelihood and the mu is for mean and uh, sigma is for standard deviation so we'll go through some of these calculations in the next video uh, in this video I just want to show you that how it is applicable so again we go back to the poultry farm and this time we are weighing a chicken and let's say the weight of the chicken is around 2500 grams now if you look at these three plots going from left to right uh, what is changing in these three plots is the mean if you look at the dotted line in the leftmost plot the mean is 1500 in the middle plot it's 2000 and the rightmost plot it's 2500 the n and standard deviation is same for all the three plots the orange plot dot is showing the weight that we have measured for the chicken in the previous slide so that's at 2500 grams now if we pose a question as to which population uh, this data point of 2500 grams came from then we can look through these three likelihood functions and 
as you can see we can vary the mean or standard deviation or both to kind of get the value for maximum likelihood and here we can see that as we go from left to right on the rightmost side uh, when the mean of that particular distribution equals 2500 grams that's when the likelihood is the highest and therefore we could say that mm, uh, this data point came from a population that has a distribution uh, shown in the similar to the one that's shown on the rightmost plot so that was it for this video i hope in this video you learned how to uh, look at the likelihood functions kind of the intuition behind it and its applications with either the binomial distribution or the gaussian distribution and uh, thinking about it in a kind of application wise how it can be useful in next video we'll look at maximum likelihood please like share and subscribe i hope to see you all in the next video if you have any comments or suggestions please do let me know in the comment section below thank you